Hello, welcome to the first of what I hope to be many uh, common list programming language tutorials. My name is Will, and as you can see, I am a really big fan of Homestuck. Terezi is like kick ass. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, spcl.org. Let's go back to the front page. And uh, SPCL is a, a common list compiler. It's completely open source and it's my preferred version of setting up my list programs. Uh, you can use any other uh, ANSI, co ANSI compliant uh, compiler that you'd like, such as C Lisp, uh, CMU, uh, Allegro, or uh, Lispworks. Those last two are proprietary, uh, that is to say, they cost uh, quite a bit actually, um, but they do offer uh, kind of free versions. Anyway, so if you do decide to go uh, with SPCL, like I said, it's at spcl.org, and uh, just go to the download section, find your operating system and architecture, and uh, and this little matrix, and just click on the version you wish to download on Windows. So obviously, keep clicking on that. Now, as a note for Windows users, uh, don't be too afraid of the port in progress uh, listing. This doesn't really concern anything we're going to be doing in the tutorial. This is mostly for implementation specific things such as um, multi-threading and things of that nature that are, are, aren't really uh, covered by the standard. So, Anyway, once you've got it downloaded, the Windows version does have a binary installer. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, because we will be working from the command line uh, with SPCL, uh, what we want to do is to be able to access SVCL from the command line as I'm going to be doing here. Yours will probably not do that. It'll probably say that it cannot find uh, the SVCL program. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, find the directory that you installed SVCL at, the default directory being your local hard, dri hard drive, uh, program files x86 if you're on 64-bit, um, on 32-bit just program files, uh, go down to steel bank common lisp right there uh, the, ver the correct version and uh, yeah, just verify that you have sbcl.exe there that's the that's uh, what we want just copy the uh, the directory so we can set it up in our path so <clears throat> so what we're going to do is open up computer properties we're going to go into advanced system settings and we're going to hit environment variables. Environment variables are, if uh, just as a little command prompt for a uh, command line tutorial, uh, environment variables are just variables you can access from the command line. Um, you can give them whatever value you, you like, but the, there is one specific variable uh, that's called the path variable. You may or may not have this variable. What you want to do is if you don't have it, just click on new and uh, create the variable by typing path. I prefer to use all uppercase, kind of to put emphasis on it, uh, but uppercase, lowercase, it doesn't matter at all. Um, and then just give it the, the value you want, which is that directory. If you already have a path variable set up, as I do here, what you want to do is select it then click on edit so that you can just change its value because if you already have it set up it means that you're probably using it for something else so say you have all this junk already in there and you wish to add your directory as a as a value for it as well so take whatever you have already uh, terminate it with a semicolon and uh, just paste right in there the the new value uh, a, vari a variable here can have multiple values and you separate them by semicolons as I did there. So what's going to happen here is that when uh, Windows is going to go ahead and uh, execute a program that I call from the command line, it's going to look in all these directories that I give it. So it's going to look in the first one, if it's not there it's going to look in the next one, and so on. And I actually already had uh, SPCL set up there, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this from there. And uh, once you have that set up, and then you can just close this all out. If you did have the command prompt open, uh, it won't reflect the changes that you made in it, so you need to go ahead and restart the command prompt. To get to the command prompt, you can either uh, 
type out CMD in the search bar here. It's going to appear at the top or just press enter to get to it. Uh, to alternatively, you can go uh, out programs, accessories, uh, command prompts right there. Yours is probably not going to be looking all sleek and cool with the purple, but uh, that's okay. So anyway, now that we're here, we're going to just verify that those changes that we made uh, work correctly by typing SBCL. So as I said before, Windows is going to search each of those uh, directories that you gave it for a program called SBCL.exe. The, the, the .exe is kind of implied. So uh, <clears throat> there we go. Now we're at the what's called the list, the Lisp top level. Um, at the top level, I'll go over over it more deeply in the uh, following video. That way, I have a little more time. The, but the top level is uh, a read, evaluate, print loop, or REPL. And what this is going to do is it's going to prompt us for input as it's doing right here, as represented by the asterisk. On another compiler, it's going to be doing something else, um, such as CL user, and it's going to give you like a line number. Anyway, here it's going to await a valid Lisp expression. What it's going to do, it's going to re read it, it's going to evaluate it, and it's going to print back the results. And then it's going to loop around, hence the loop in REPL. Um, <clears throat> so uh, for the re remainder of these, this video, I'm just going to talk about some basic Lisp data types. And uh, the first of which, which is present in many languages, is just going to be the integer. Uh, integer being, you know, any number of digits. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nine, uh, six 7, 9. And uh, obviously leading 0 is just going to get chopped off. Um, so yeah, to represent a negative integer, you just type uh, dash and then the, the integer you wish to, to have. And uh, as you can see, here what it's doing is, as I said, it's, it's reading our input, it's evaluating it, and then it's printing back the results. Uh, constants, such as uh, integers, are just going to evaluate to themselves. The next data type that we have is going to be floating point numbers, and uh, these are very similar except they have a fractional part. So here we're going to have 10.5, for example, or uh, 7.6, etc. Just as uh, just as in <coughs> integer numbers, we can have uh, negative versions of them as well. So just use the dash to to set them up. So that's negative uh, 0.5. Uh, in addition, we have characters. Here we have the character A. Uh, characters are represented by having a pound sign, backslash, and then the character. So we have lowercase a, and here we have uppercase a. Uh, there are some characters that are kind of difficult to represent, such as the space, or tabs, or new lines, things like that. Uh, you can represent it by literally putting the character you want right there. So this would be a space, since I put a space right after the, the backslash. However, that's a bit illegible, especially when you're writing actual programs. So instead, it's much better to use the long forms, which is to type out the name of the character that you wish to represent. So if I want a space, I would type out space. Uh, tab, uh, new line, etc. Uh, uppercase to lowercase doesn't matter. I prefer to use all uppercase in order to kind of specify, you know, put emphasis on it when you're looking at source code. Uh, uh, that's up to you what style you wish to use on that. One thing of note with characters is that unlike in some languages such as in C or in Java, characters are not represented internally as integers. So you cannot do something like add a character and an integer, and you cannot do something as add a character to a character or to a floating point. Uh, characters are just characters and they have no numerical value whatsoever. So uh, some people love that, some people completely hate it. There are, there's arguments for both sides, but uh, either way, it's part of the standard, so deal with it. Um, okay, so that's it for this tutorial right here. Next time, we're, go we're gonna go over more into the, the basic data types, and uh, we're gonna write our first list program.